Hi guys. Well, since Tom Roll didn't quite work out, and I'll explain all of that in another video, this week I'm pushing on with the layout, in the form of retaining walls. Like Corish, and probably any 009 modeler these days, I'm using these Slate Wills walling packs to help me along. I have three packs, as whilst there's four in each one, being Wills products, the pieces really aren't that big. I dream of a world where Wills makes their sheets in A4. If you're new to these, they really give a convincing base to build slate walls and buildings from. The finish is high quality, and the sheets are thick, so they don't need back support, and will stand up on their own. Another thing about these sheets is that the pattern repeats on each end, so you can keep joining them up in a line and it all matches up nicely. So that's the walling material sorted, but the platform needs a base as well. I decided the best material for this was going to be foam board. It's light, easy to cut with a knife, and comes in a variety of thicknesses. I originally planned this, as you can see, to use 3mm thick, but as if by magic, it's now 5mm. I went up a couple of millimetres as the gap between the coach's running boards and the platform was too large, and looking on the prototype reference photos, it's pretty close. Of course, this isn't actually the final height, because I need to add on the capping stones and platform surface later on so it'll be more like this. The platform needs to be cut to shape, and I decided it best to give it a final cut in situ. So to get to that point, the foam board needs to be fitted into place. As the track curves at this point, I need to slightly trim the front of the foam board to include it. The rear of the board isn't important right now, so I'll just roughly cut a piece slightly larger than the platform. This can then be glued down into position. I decided that the best glue for this would be all purpose glue by Bostick, as it's more of a gel and it'll help adhere to the cork much better than any runny glue. A few random squiggles and blobs of glue should be more than enough, and once I've figured out the correct orientation of the platform, it can be pushed down into place. The process is then repeated down the length of the platform. I've given it a few hours to dry, so I can now trim the foam board to shape. The rear of the platform is easy. As I cut the wooden base to the correct size, I just glide the knife along its edge as a guide. I can now begin to add the slate wall in. It seems a waste to bury the whole piece here, so I mark in the height of the wall, and cutting it to size on the workbench. A few cuts with the knife and a wiggle at the end is enough to get through this thick plastic sheet. I mentioned the little nibs before, these will now be trimmed off. The sides of the sheet are now lightly filed smooth. I'm holding the sheet at a slight angle to make the front of each sheet super close when I join them up. I opted for the hot glue gun for the job of joining these sheets on, as time is of the essence at the moment and it only takes a matter of seconds to dry. The issue I have is that the glue gun doesn't actually hold a huge amount per stick, but I could do with a bigger gun. With glue squirted onto the foam edge, the first sheet is stuck down. I'm starting here as you can see the baseboard joint to the immediate left of the sheet, so it makes sense to have a walling join here as well. With that one dry, I'll move on to the next. Because the platform has a strange curvy shape, I'm holding the sheet tight up against it as the glue dries. If you remember from the drone footage, I found a random little bit of wall below the platform, and that's exactly what this piece will be eventually. One thing to keep in mind when you're looking at this is how little of this walling will actually be visible once the scenery is applied. You'll probably only see a few centimetres of it, 
I want to include detail of the wall finishing on the platform edge. So I'll first cut the slope of the platform surface into the foam board. This is once again correctly located by noting the position of the whiteboard limit marker between the tracks. So the wall continues to protrude out at this point, so a final piece of walling is glued onto the end. And an even tinier piece glued back to back onto that, for the visible rear part of the wall. I attempted to hide any joins in the pieces of slate wall with pavement textured paint as I did on Corish, but it didn't really work that well. I'm not actually that bothered because as I mentioned before, most of this will actually be covered in moss and plants, so you won't see it anyway. I actually continue to tell myself that the whole way through this video's build, as all these jobs take a huge amount of time to do. I'm going to sort the platform's edge next, so, so before I trim the cap in slate I need to trim the foam board back into the correct distance from the rails. I'm using a ruler just to help get a clean edge when I'm cutting it. To make the slates, the only real option I see here is to scratch build and apply each one individually. So white plaster card is first cut into strips. These are random widths and range between something like 4 to 8 millimeters wide. Each strip can then be individually cut into slates. Like the strips, these don't want to be uniform so it's pretty random. I've now got a nice little pile of tiny squares, so I can now commence the next immensely time consuming job of gluing them on. I'm applying a little bead of PVA onto the foam board and then each slate gets popped down into place. I try to not look at each slate as I'm picking them up out of the pile so it's nice and random. That will continue all the way down the platform as far as a head shunt point. On the prototype the style of slab changes here to a much more uniform, almost patio style stone, and I can't make them look that tidy by hand. So instead of the little tiny plastic squares, I'm going to use this wooden plank plaster card. A strip is cut off the end of the sheet, and when done at the correct width, looks like slabs. Genius! Me, I'm, I'm a genius. With a nice big grin on my face, this is glued down in one go, saving about 72 hours of glue in individual slates. The slate walling also needs capping off, and for this I'm using random stone sheet that many modellers will be familiar with as it's what we used for slate before the slate sheets. Even if it doesn't really look like slate, it does however look like the top of this wall. Like before, this edge is far from straight, so the strip is being glued on with super glue bit by bit. This allows me to force the sheet around the curves without jumping back off. With all the scratch building done for now, I can now move on to painting. And first, we must primer. This is grey car primer in an aerosol can, because it's grey and quick to use. I'm masking off the track work with a piece of scrap paper, but actually, why did I bother? Because I need to paint the track soon anyway. As the primer is dry to the touch, I can now apply the base coat. All these colours follow the technique on Corish. But in case you're extremely busy and have an excuse to miss that series, this is Anita's Acrylics Grey. It is my favourite grey in the world because it's actually very warm, so it is perfect for stonework. You can see how cold it makes grey car primer look as it covers it. It is not all actually good news at this point, because this colour has been discontinued in the UK for years now, and I really can't find any, and my bottle's feeling very light at this point. I need to find a replacement ASAP. The grey is also sprayed along the platform edging, even if these will be hand painted later on. To begin to bring realism and interest to the stone, I'm going to start hand painting in lighter shades with blue grey acrylic. This doesn't need to be hundreds of slates, just enough to give a nice example of variation.
The same method is repeated once again, only this time I use a darker grey. I could really do with one that's actually a bit darker than this, as it's quite subtle, but then again it probably needs to be. I'm using paint neat from the bottle, as I only want to be going over these slates once, so the coat needs to be thick. For the platform edging, I decided the best way to tackle that would be with a series of washes instead of full-on painting. On photos, they look quite cold compared to the platform surface gravel, so I watered down blue-grey. Using the same colour as the slates on the wall actually helps bring all the layout together. A few random stones are picked out in another colour, which I can't remember so hopefully I've put it on the screen for you, like a good boy. All of the stonework is now heavily dry brushed with light antique white. And this will really bring an aged weathered look to the wall in. The main thing here is to try and get a consistent covering, as it's easy to have obvious brush strokes in it. The final coat for it all is an enamel black wash. This will settle in the mortar lines, which is why I originally applied it, but actually brushing it over the faces of the slates will give another level of weathering when they're dry, as the paint should start to pull around the edges, but we'll see. And there we go. Ok, well it's all still wet as I've just finished applying the wash. But I think this week's work has really launched the layout into Talatlin Realms. It's also given me confidence that the layout will look quite interesting when it's all done and complete, even if it's a very basic track plan. Then again, this is Narragage, and that's what we like about Narragage isn't it? Bleak and minimal. Well that's why I like it anyway. Righto. I require sleep now to act like a human tomorrow. Cheers.